Good. Morning, everybody. Morning. Everybody have a good week. Yeah. We're continuing on with our study in Acts. We're going to be in Acts chapter 13, if y'all want to turn there today. Acts chapter 13. Saul is about to become Paul. He's going to be going on a mission trip to deliver the gospel. I want to hit some highlights through this chapter. I, I want to read through it because it's the Word of God. And we never know where God's going to take us on this stuff, but uh, I'll try to hit a few highlights. If y'all would agree with me, we'll go to with prayer to the Lord before we get started this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you, Lord. We're grateful and thankful, Father, to be in your house and be able to hear your word. Lord, I just ask, Father, I just ask the Holy Spirit to have his way through me and through everyone in this church, Lord, that, that, Lord, that your word becomes a revelation to us, Father, and that, Lord, that we take this word out and that souls are saved, delivered, and healed in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manion, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. This right here, this right here kind of got me, as they ministered to the Lord. How do you minister to the Lord? I studied up on this and several different things looked at. <clears throat> From what I've seen, when you minister to the Lord, you do, it, you do the Lord's work. They were going out preaching the Word. They were feeding the poor. They were uh, healing the sick. They were doing the things that, uh, that the Lord wants us to do. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy for this real quick. We need to stop on this. This this early church, who is our example today, Amen. I mean, we're just ex extension of the early church. We're to be doing what the early church was. They ministered to the Lord. They, in, in other words, they did the work of the Lord and they fasted so they could hear the Lord clearer. And then the Holy Ghost said, "This is how we be leading us, Amen. He's our guide." The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Now look at verse 4 again, because we this right here is so important. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. A lot of times we want to do something for the Lord, but we're doing it under our own steam. You know, we feel... That well, that there's you know I need to do this and I need to go here and I need to do that. The thing we need to do is listen to the Holy Ghost, Amen. And they did this through prayer and fasting. That's how we'll hear as we get in contact with the Father. The Holy Ghost shall guide us in all truth, and that's what they've done here. And like I said, this is our example today. This is the beginnings of the church. This is how we know when we are right. We are doing what. The Bible teaches us to do. They minister to the Lord. They were doing His work, but they are praying and fasting, and they are waiting for the Spirit of the living God to tell them what to do, how to do, where to go. Amen? Amen. This is an example for us today. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found, listen, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Now they're going out. Let's look at what we got here, because this is interesting. This is really, it's a hard uh, study. I, I tried to study on this. You get, you know, you get different views, you know, on everything. But we're going to stay with what this word says because the word's the truth. Amen. It says, When they had gone through the aisle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet. So he is delivering an untruth. Amen. He is not teaching the gospel. He is, he is I don't know what he's teaching. It doesn't say, I don't care. Prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Which, now listen, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius, who called for Barnabas and Saul, 
And he desired to hear the word of God. Here's a man, he is in a place of authority, he, he is someone known, and, and Satan, you know, Satan is strategically, if you look at this, he strategically placed someone in the line of this man that wants to hear the word of God. You ever notice this? You will find this a lot today. If you ever find people that are hungry for the word, and they would like to hear that what he's got to say, there will always be something that is a distraction. We have seen this, haven't we, brother? We have seen this, trying to hear, and there will be someone sent by Satan. Now, I'm not talking about a child speaking out or somebody that has a cough. I'm talking about someone that is under the power of the enemy that is doing his best to keep this word because it's the word that works, amen? He's trying to keep this word from being heard because as the Bible teaches, the word can come in and it will come in the good ground, the ground being the heart. Now Jesus is in the ground, and then there's good ground, and there's so hardened it is no longer good ground to receive the word. I'll be like, I just don't believe that. I don't want to hear it. And then there's people that are hungry for the word. Apparently this man was hungry for the word. He wanted to hear what this Barnabas and this Saul was teaching. He had heard of the miracles and the things that were happening with this new bunch of radicals called Christians. He wants to hear the word. But Satan has used this man to get him to try to keep the word from being taught. Verse 8 says, But Elimus, and this is the sor it says, Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. He does not want this man coming to the knowledge of Jesus. Now look at verse 9, because this is... This, this is for us. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. Here you see Paul being introduced. Filled with the what? Holy the Holy Ghost. That's right. He is filled. This man that was a hunter of Christians just a short time ago is now filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, he is known as one of the greatest apostles, amen. But you know what it is when you cut all that away? He is a man. Just like any one of us as man and woman, amen. amen. But he's filled with the Holy Ghost. I've, I've tried to show you all this in the past, that the difference between them and us most times is this. They are men and women full of... It's, it's dangerous to Satan, amen. amen. And it is powerful. Now, here we are. Then Saul, who was also called Paul... Filled with the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Look at this now. He set his eyes on him. If he's filled with the Holy Ghost, he's filled with the spiritual gifts. Amen. You agree? Yeah. He's listening to God. Now, I don't care if this man's over here doing things, making smoky potions or what all this. He may not have been doing anything. You know what? Paul set his eyes on him. He knew. Because he's filled with the Spirit of God. And God's telling him, this guy's. No good. He's here to disrupt. He's a false prophet. He's, he's working under magic. It's not God. It's not me. He's telling uh, Paul this. And he set his eyes on him. Now listen to this. And said, O fool of all subtility. In other words, he is a, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's using uh, uh, magic. He's using illusions to, to get people to follow him. You see this all through the Bible. You're seeing it today. It's disguised in ways, but anything, listen, anything that draws you away from the truth of God, anything. I mean, you can use, you know, it's, it's sleight of hand. It is. It's in your colleges. They're teaching your children there's no God. There's no God. We have proof that the world is billions and billions of years old and man evolved. He come out of the oceans. He crawled up and took his first gasp of air. That's... That's false prophets. Amen. That's what's going on here. And all mischiefs, thou... Listen to what he calls him. Now, he had to be speaking. He's under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because it's not our place to judge. Right, church? And he said, look at what he says. Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, now listen. This is Paul speaking. Listen to this. And now behold... The hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, 
And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, do you see this stage? Because I like to use imagery because I need it. I'm country boy, simple logic, amen. So I need it put out black and white. Here he's come, this man of importance, this deputy, is wanting to hear what is going on. He has heard of the gospel of Jesus being preached out in the countryside. He says, I want to hear what this Barnabas and, and this Saul, this, this man to be known as Paul, is speaking of. I want to see the miracles that are being done. This guy, knowing this, he's under the influence of Satan. He's a child of the devil, Paul calls him, right? He's walking up and he's going to do everything he can to divert the people. And he don't want this deputy coming to Christianity because you know why? He'll be seen as who he is, a liar. He'll be shown that your power ain't the power of the living God. Do you hear me, church? God is doing this. I've wondered, why did this happen at this time? This is the beginning of the church. Amen? This is the birth of the church we're studying in Acts. Right? It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Right, church? So right here is the birth of this thing. Paul's getting ready. We haven't, we're not being pruned. He's going from revelation, we'll read later, revelation to revelation to revelation. Jesus is going to show him through visions and dreams and revelations the grace of God. But right now at this part is the birth of the church. Right now they're still in the Jewish community teaching the gospel of Jesus. And that's where this chapter is going. Because Paul is going to lay out all the past and me and my buddy this morning, I was talking about this. You know, you would think the Jews would have known that they have been groomed in the Messiah coming from, from the time they're old enough to understand. Amen. They had the Torah. But right here is this man that is trying to do his best to keep you from hearing this truth. Because this truth will set you free. Amen. This truth will set you free if you believe. Okay. Lots of people have heard Scripture. They have gone and heard a good sermon. You have to prepare your heart for receiving. This deputy here of this area, he wants to hear the word being preached. But God is going to use this child of the devil, this man under the influence of Satan, as an example. He is going to blind him for a season. He is going to show, listen, I am God. This man, Paul, is filled with my spirit. And you can't stand. And that's what we got here. And I'm like, go team. Amen. <laughs> go team. God will not be outdone. You can stand your ground today. Hear me? Children of the devil will raise up and they're telling you're being foolish for standing for your healing. You're being ignorant to go and waste your time and give your money to that church. I've been taught so and so in this area and that area that that's not real. You're goofy. You're radical. I'm telling you, you can stand on the power to live in God. Amen? Amen? Verse 12. Now he is blinded and having to be led around this great saucer. <laughs> then the deputy, when he saw what was done, listen, believed. He believed. Wouldn't you? This man rose up against the preaching of the gospel against a man filled with the Holy Spirit. It's dangerous, church. It's dangerous. When people are filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God, they got God back in them. Amen? When he saw what was done, he believed. God is still, listen to me, he is still using signs and wonders today. When you see someone that was on drugs for years and now they are delivered by the hand of the living God, that's a miracle. Amen. Amen. When you see every one of us sitting here that believe in the power of God and the blood of Jesus Christ and are going to heaven when we were yet filthy sinners, that's a miracle. Amen. When we see a healing, that's a miracle. When we someone, see someone that's walking in joy in the midst of all kinds of chaos and trouble in their life, that's a miracle. That's the hand of God. Only God can do that. You know, I've seen people that are so, uh, you know, I listen, you know, we've all had family. Some of us have family members that are battling horrific things. We've all been there. Amen. But you can see one touch from God, one. And that person will flip and be one of the mightiest individuals walking for the kingdom of Christ. You can't back them down. You can't shut them up. And you can't stop them. Only God can do that. Amen. That's what we've got going on here, and I think this is awesome. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, he believed being astonished. Listen to this at the doctrine of the Lord. We are to be astonished. This is amazing. It's the Word of God. It is stood. Great minds have tried to destroy this Word, 
and stomp it out. They would give anything for us to quit following this Bible. Quit following this Jesus. But they can't do it. Historians have tried to disprove it. They can't do it. They'll, then there'll be an archaeological dig somewhere and I'll be darned. That's just like it says in the Bible. The harder they try. That's right. It's not going to work. He's God. Amen. We can stand on this word. Verse 13. Now when Paul... Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Persia in Pamphylia, and John departing from them, he returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed to Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after, listen to this, because I thought this was interesting, and after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. You know what? That's an invitation. Can't you imagine, Paul? They're preaching on the law, you know, and they're talking about the prophets. And what's amazing, they've probably, I mean, I, I can't prove this, but more than likely, they probably ain't taught on the Messiah. This Jesus that, you know, he, you know they, they probably taught on him. They've been taught this for years. Can't you see Paul sitting there on the back of the pew? Let me up there. I'll show you something. He, I bet he is jacked to get up. And, they, and, they, and here they go. Does anybody have anything they say that it might exhort or uplift or edify the people? Can't you see Paul? I do! I got something to say. And now he's going to start in on the history. This next part is just going to be the history. He's going to show them, y'all, what is wrong with you? You've been taught this since you were this tall. And you cannot see. You are blind to the fact that the Messiah was here. You crucified him. That's what he's about to show them. Nobody wants to know we're wrong. It's going to be a hard lick. Amen? Verse 16, Then Paul stood up, and beckoning him with his right hand, he said, Men of Israel, and you that fear God, give audience. In other words, pay attention. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years unto Samuel the prophet. He's merely telling their past. Which, listen, they know. They know this, Amen. All right. Verse 21. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Jesus come out of that seed. It's his lineage. Amen. He's merely telling them their past. That's all he's doing. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto, unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Now listen, I, I can't emphasize that they've been taught this from like this. Just as soon as their mind can comfort, they've been told a Messiah's coming. A Savior is going to, they're going to take us out of bondage. We're going to be a great people again. We're going to have our own land back. They've been slaves, amen? They've been under the bondage and tyranny of man. Their existence! And they are waiting. Listen, church, it's the same today. They're waiting for the Savior, their mighty Savior to come in. But they've got it figured in their mind. He'll come in like a roaring lion, and he will slay anyone that opposes him. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for this a Messiah that's going to be over there with the heathens, with the, the trash of the world, if you will, people that eat with people that got nothing, and they see this Jesus out there with... He's always hanging out with, pardon my French, harlots... He's always with sick people. He's, he's over there helping the demonic. And here's the Jewish set, you know, the religious folk. Who is this Jesus? Blasphemer. They, see, they, they just can't wrap their mind around this common man that can do all these things, that can steal storms. He's just, man, he's, he's Joseph's boy. 
He can't be the Messiah. See it? People today are looking for something so bad. They're desperate. They're at, listen, church, they're absolutely desperate. They're looking for peace. So they go and they try to make money. Lots of money, right? Because if I get lots of money in my toys, then I'll, then I'll have my happiness. Or if I can get that woman because she is hot, then I'll be happy. I mean, I'm just trying to be real, right? Right, church? And if I get this, and if I get there, and if I get my retirement, then I might do something for God. But I need this first. So I'll go anywhere, absolutely anywhere. I'll go to a psychiatrist. I'll go to a, to, a, uh, to a loan officer. I'll go anywhere, but I've got to find some peace. And I'll work any hours, and I'll do this, and I'll give that up, and I'll, 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 I'll get her. I'll get, my, I'll get what I need. And they miss it. They miss the free gift. The Savior's been here and gone. The Spirit of the Lord is with every one of us. Right now. And the Bible says, You hath all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of Him. Amen, church? Amen. I mean, we have scriptures to stand on today, beloved. Above all things, I want you to prosper. Be in health. As your soul prospers, you have the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And it's right there. But because it ain't a burning bush, because it ain't the sword that comes in and whips every one of our enemies in front of us, and we don't get the glowing angel of a night, we just can't grasp the fact that He is the Messiah. But you know what gives you these things to manifest in your life? Believe in them. The Bible says in Mark 11, whatsoever, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. Believe it. When? When I pray for it. When I go to the Father in faith and ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, I need help in this situation. When I believe right then, when I believe, not when I hope so, not when I'm, not, not when I'm crying out and begging, when I believe... When I believe that I'm asking something that is in the will of God, is it His will to heal me? Yes. Is it His will for me to prosper? Yes. Is it His will for me to be happy? Yes. He's the King of Peace. Amen. When I believe this and then walk in it, I'll have it. Because church, there's seed. The Word's going in right now. Then there's time, right? And then there's the harvest. So what is that teaching me right there? When I go after something that I know God has promised me, I take that Word, right? And you grip it with a grip that nobody can jerk it out of your hand. Do you hear me? It don't matter what Satan throws at you, how your symptoms may feel on your disease. It doesn't matter that the money just seems to be disappearing right before your eyes like a mist. It doesn't matter. You grab the Word of God. Hear me, church? And you clutch it. And you hold on to it. And you speak it. And you confess it. And you believe it. And you know what happens? You'll get the harvest. Amen, church? Apparently, I needed to go on that. I have no idea where I am now. But anyway, that was for us. Amen? Amen. Verse 24. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think you that I am? I am not he. Speaking of John the Baptist here now. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God to you, listen, is the word of this salvation sent. He come to... You know, it's like Jesus said, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, speaking of the, the Jewish people, how I'd love to gather you like a, a mother hen does her chicks. They just won't believe it. That's just not how I figured the Messiah coming. Verse 27, For they, they that dwell at Jerusalem and the rulers, because they knew Him not, because they knew Him not, listen, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning Him. They did exactly... You know, this is amazing. They did exactly what the prophets told them to do. You'll kill Him. You'll crucify your son. Is this amazing you? This is amazing me. People, the whole world out here needs Jesus so desperately and they have no idea. I've been to church. I've heard that. I've heard that. You can hear it all day long. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Amen. There's people today right now, and then again, me and my good friend was talking about this morning, missionaries that are going out right now into places that 
Right here, you can come here and we can worship God. You can get down at this altar. You can pray. You can do pretty much anything here and feel free to worship your God. Amen. But there are nations in the world where you better know who you are in Christ. You better know the power of the living God is working in you and through you because they'll kill you for what you believe. Do you hear me, church? Right now in this time, right now, there are missionaries abroad in the field right now that are facing death. But you know what they're doing? They're locked down grid tight, big boy. I'm telling you right now, they are jacked for the name of Jesus and they ain't scared and they ain't moving. That's believing. That's believing. I'll die for him. However, at this particular time, the Jewish nation is not getting this. And with all the prophets telling them this, this is amazing to me. Verse 28, And though they found no cause... Listen, they found no cause of death in him, yet they desired Pilate that he should be slain. <laughs> they could, he wasn't guilty, we know that. He was sinless. But you know what? He's a burr under my saddle. Kill him. Kill him. Because the people are leaving the synagogues. Listen, and they're going to that, that Jesus guy. And they're getting healed. Man, to put it in easy terms, they're getting happy. They're being set free. For the first time, they know peace. They're not having to work their guts out to feel they're accepted by God. The Jewish sect, you know, I hate to put it this way, the church don't like it. The church don't like it. You know what? You can get in here, we can get happy in this church, Amen. You know what? You can go to a ball game and act like a pure-grained idiot. Can I have an amen on that, anybody? Not to offend anybody, but I've seen it. You know, yay, me, boo! You know, Wah! we'll paint ourselves up and act like freaks! We come in the house of God, you've got eternal life, you've got healing, you've got deliverance. We sit here like we're dead. I just, well, it's hard for me to raise my hand. Somebody might see me. Right? You should be the happiest people that walk this planet. Amen. Does anybody know they're going to heaven? Amen. That you've got the Spirit of living God, that if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that dwells in you? Amen. Yes. Do you know that? Amen. Right there you ought to be doing cartwheels, but wait till this is over. Amen? <laughs> no, you don't have to wait. Verse 29. And when they had fulfilled... Listen, I love this because Jesus did not live till it was all done. Everything, amen. Everything you need, you have. But it's through the knowledge of Him. Do you see this, church? You have this. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of Him, they took Him down from the tree and laid Him in a sepulcher. But God raised Him from the dead. Now see, I get jacked right there. Why? Can't you see Satan on the day of crucifixion? This Jesus, this guy that can speak to storms and shut down sickness and demons tremble. Look at Him now. Look at Him up there on the tree, naked, beat to death. You can't even recognize Him. The Messiah... You know what else freaks the Jews out about this? Because the, the Bible said, and the prophets taught this, cursed is anyone that hangeth on a tree. Cursed. See, that's a stumbling block to them today. They can't grasp that. How could that be the Messiah? He's crucified. Satan's having a field day, ain't he? Can't you see him? <laughs> he didn't fulfill it. And then, <laughs> then, can you imagine death could not hold your Savior. Did, did, did anybody hear that? Yes. Is anybody awake in here? Yeah. Let me say it again. Death. Remember that death? Anybody seen the face of death? When our loved ones pass and that, you know, that, that distorted, that, that nothing there look? Have we seen that? Jesus beat it. Amen. I said, Jesus beat it, church. Amen. Jesus beat it. Your loved ones are alive and well that know Christ. Amen. You're going to be with them. They just couldn't grasp it. It's a, hard, it's a hard thing to grasp. It is. Amen? Do you believe it? That's where the change will come in your life. Do you believe this is the Word of God? God raised Him from the dead. And listen, and He was seen many days of them, actually like 40 days of this. Listen, 
which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. Now, here, and I know I'm getting snagged on a lot of stuff, but I can't, I, I can't stop. See, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in, Scott. See what I'm saying? Some of these things, they don't grasp you until you're right here and you're asking God to show you things. You know what's weird? Why did, you know who I'd have went to if I was Jesus? I'd have went to Pilate. I'd have went to Pilate, the guy that crucified me. I'd have been in at his bed that morning. Dunk, 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 dunk. Remember me? I'm the Jesus you crucified. But you know who he goes to? He goes back to after he's conquered death. Who does he go to, church? The believers. The ones that believed in him before they seen it. Can you, do you hear this? Is anybody getting this message that the Holy Spirit... Because trust me, this is all God here. I did not have this before I got here. Amen, Scott? I mean, this was a hard chapter. I see it now, though. What's God doing? He's showing me. Jesus could have went to all of them. He could have appeared in the sky like a... Fear could have failed. But no, he goes back to the ones that loved him and were with him, that believed him before. Do you see where your victory lies? Church. He's with the believers. Not the I hope so. It's a lot of people. And this is where I always get in trouble with this, but I, it's the truth that sets us free. Amen? Right, church? Because we're not condemners of anybody. We're not judges, but we speak truth. Believing is doing what he says. And I'm not talking about a walk of just absolute obedience where you can't do anything wrong. We all sin, amen? Do you believe the blood's good enough to save you? It is, amen? amen? It's when I truly believe this, I'll pick this up and walk in it, and that is where your fruit is going to lie. He goes back to the ones that loved him. He told Thomas, you know, you know, remember, you know, he's known, and I don't like this, doubting Thomas, because later if you follow Thomas, he went up and he died for the gospel for Jesus. He died. Now, he had a time of doubting. Has nobody else in here doubted? Hey, look here, I'm not scared. I've doubted stuff before. Has anybody else doubted? But you know, the fact of the matter is, I know in my heart what I know. This is truth. Whether anybody likes it or not, it's the truth. It's not going to change God. He is truth. Amen. When you believe and you stand your ground and you refuse to move off something that you know is truth that God has revealed to us in His Word, victory is yours. You can't lose. Well, what if I die? You go to be with Him. <laughs> you, did, I, did I tell you? You're going with Him, right? Amen. The paradise. There'll never be another sickness. Not one more tear. You're going to be with Jesus who died for you. If you were the only one, that's amazing. If I was the only one, there's a guy here that knows my past from way back, and I've told you that I've kept no secrets in church. I was a battler. And this man, tell you, I fight the drop of a hat under no, you know, I was wrong. I was an error, but I'd fight. You know, it's still my nature, I have to fight that. But you know what God did? He saved me Amen. from my own curse. I'm going to heaven, Not, nothing to do with me. I just chose, I said, Jesus, I need you. And he said, You're mine. How do I know that? Because the Bible says. Anyone believes that your key is in your believing. I know it's a hard thing sometimes. Do you believe? Do you believe? Okay. Verse thirty-two, and we declare unto you glad tidings. Boy, I'm I'm getting behind that. How that the promise which was made unto the father. I love that. See how that promise, man. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, that He hath raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee. See, he's using the Scripture to prove his point. Do you see it, church? That's all you need. When somebody comes against you, speak the word. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise. In other words, he's never going to die again. Amen. Never. Never. I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another Psalm, Thou art not suffered thine holy one to see corruption. My Jesus is not in some rotten tomb wasting away. He's alive and well and He's seated on the right hand of the Father. Amen? Amen. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Now listen to this. Look. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that brought this that, that through this man is preaching to you the forgiveness of sins. Now, 
If you grab nothing else from this, please grasp verse 39. You ready? I'm going to read it to you. Ready? And by Him, by Jesus, right, church? Amen. And by Him, all, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. What does this mean to a country bumpkin like me? I put my faith in Jesus and it's over. It's done. I am justified. What's that mean? I'm in right standing with my Father in heaven. I am righteous. I am in right standing with my Father in heaven. Why? And thank you this. Why? Because I believe. Th did he say... Now let, let's look at this because this is not... I, I, I can't help it even if it runs over Brother Albert. We have to look at this. Amen, church? And by Him... By who? By Jesus! By Him, all that believe... He didn't say all that are good enough, all that tithe enough, all that feed the poor, all that do this and everything right, then I'll save you. Does he not say that, church? He says all that believe. This is incredible. Somebody ought to be getting excited except me because that's amazing. That is amazing. People are trying... Listen, they're trying to work out still. They're under the curse of the law. And Galatians chapter 3 tells us clearly that we are redeemed, ransomed from the curse of the law. Amen. Is this amazing? Does anybody else get this but me? And I'm slow. <laughs> We're, you're justified if you believe in Jesus. I don't have to worry about it. If I leave here, if I fall right down with a heart attack right now, of course, it's not going to happen because Brother Albert's going to raise me from the dead. I've got to promise I can't stay till I'm done here. Anyway, let's say in that, if I'm in a, a car wreck and, and out here and I die, you know, yes, it's okay to mourn in that, but you know where I'm going? I'm going to the Father. And what little I've done, He's going to reward me. My, he's not going to look at my knothead fights. And my cursings and my woman... He's not going to look at that. You know what he's going to look at? The blood of his son. When people sit here and try to work this out and get good enough and then I'll go do something for God, you're relying on yourself. And I mean this in no disrespect, but seriously, you ready? Who the hell do you think you are? And I said that and it should not be edited. Who do we think we are? Well, when you're saying, Jesus, your blood is not good enough. I am redeemed, Amen. I am justified from sin by my Jesus. It's worth getting excited about. Who do we think we are? I've got loved ones that are out beating their guts out trying to earn salvation. You can't do it because you know what? I'm going to slip. Probably I'm going to get chastised for saying what I said. <laughs> Thank God it's taped. Y'all love me. You let me get away with it. Amen? Amen. It's worth it. It's truth. You're justified by Jesus. If, if, listen, if you believe. The promise is if you believe, not if you're good enough. Do you hear me, church? I think that's awesome. Maybe you don't need it. I need that. Okay? I, I need Jesus. And I'm going to heaven because of it. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, you despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles, here we are, church, besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. We want it. Amen. Now when the congregation was broken up, many other Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace, the grace, the grace of God. What is the grace? It's unmerited favor on you and all he's asking. Listen, believe in me. Follow me. Is this amazing, church? This is amazing.